Welcome to Cardinals Cover 2 with Craig Grealoux and Mike Jarecki. Cardinals Cover 2 is brought to you by Arizona Cardinals Podcasts. Visit azcardinals.com slash podcasts. From the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center, here's Craig Grealoux and Mike Jarecki. Well, it's getting closer and closer, MJ, and I know uh, you're real excited about this, but uh, yes, training camp, it's no longer weeks. We're talking days now before this team heads to State Farm Stadium. Yeah, vacation's over. Now it's time to get to work, and we're all looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting times, and, and, and obviously if you're a fan of the Arizona Cardinals and you're just you're curious as we are, Free parking, free admission. Obviously, you can check out azcardinals.com for all the information there. But we're all looking forward to it. Obviously, we want to look past what happened last year. Oh, that's without a question. Uh, again, doing something a little bit different here on Cards Cover 2 ahead of training camp. And we talked offense and really, really broke it down with color analyst Ron Wolfley on our last show. And now kind of want to flip it. Let's look at the other side of the ball and the defense. And this is something, MJ, that uh, we've talked a lot about. And we even talked about it last season going in with a young quarterback, a rookie quarterback, that the defense – because of the talent on that side of the ball, might have to carry this team at least initially to allow everyone on the offensive end to kind of get a feel for what Kingsbury wants to do. Yeah, unfortunately, they they went to a 4-3 and that went out the door. And now they're going back to a 3-4. And and I know there's there's a lot of people excited and they didn't waste any time when they announced the hiring of Cliff Kingsbury. Steve Kine got up there and said, we're going back to a 3-4. So that's where it all started. And then you hire a guy like Vance Joseph, obviously has a defensive uh, background. He's been a coordinator in a couple different spots. He was a head coach in Denver. And he's here to prove that he's a quality coach. He was disappointed what happened there. So then the Cardinals were active in free agency. And, you know, they, you know, they got some plug-and-play guys. And then T. Sizzle coming home. So a lot of excitement. Now, you know, we do need to mention that they're, we're going to be without Patrick Peterson for the first six games. Interesting to see how that position, um, you know, shakes out. They did wrap. Byron Murphy in the second round, they, they, they think he's got a lot of good upside, so curious to see that. But for the most part, if this team can just carry their water, meaning, you know, getting them off on third down, try to stop the run, you know, you, you listen, they get paid, you're going against some really good running backs, but you can't give up 153 yards a game on the ground. And if they can shorten the field for off their offense and maybe get some turnovers, I know I'm asking a lot, but if they can just kind of help this team out initially – I think it can go a long way when it comes to wins and losses. Well, stopping the run is, is the key to all of this, and that's something that this team did not do last season. You have to be able to stop the run. I know it's a passing league, yet when you talk defense, everyone tells you, number one, stop the run because now you're making that offense one-dimensional, and then that allows – your front seven, pin the ears back, rush the quarterback, and it makes things a little bit easier on the back end. Yeah, if you make a team one-dimensional, I mean, sure, it's a passing league, but teams don't want to be sitting at third and ten and you're cheating off on their quarterback. So, you know, that we've talked about Vance Joseph. He's maintained that first down is very important. So this team is going to be aggressive, and if they can just somehow, you know, get teams off the field and, and try to create some field position um, you know, from for their for their offense, I, I think that will help them out. Now, again, not asking to pitch shutouts, just go up there and and just be keep it in the you know be competitive. There were times last year where the offense obviously wasn't able to do anything, and the defense maybe was pressing. And they weren't able to hold up to their end of the bargain. That can't happen this year. Yeah, no question. The defense has been upgraded from last season. It was a busy off season. Let's get now into that defense. Some of the different personnel that you'll see on the field here in 2019. It is part two of our two part series breaking down the 2019 Arizona Cardinals once again with the Cardinals color analyst Ron Wolfley. Perhaps, if you believe, defensive coordinator Vance Joseph, maybe as many as eight new starters defensively. There certainly will be maybe not starters, but certainly guys in the rotation that we haven't seen wearing Cardinal uniform before. And that is exciting because, well, the other exciting news is that this defense is going back to a 3-4, which traditionally here with the Cardinals has been very, very successful. As we continue here with Ron Wolfley, color analyst of the Arizona Cardinals, talking about this defense and some of the early moves that this team made focused heavily on the defense. Robert Alford, 
Jordan Hicks. I mean, those yes. offered was before the start of free agency. Hicks was right at the beginning of free agency. And I think those two, and specifically with Alford because of the suspension ahead for Patrick Peterson, those two guys might be 1A, 1B as far as most important, at least early on this season. Yeah, no doubt about it. First of all, you got to talk about the scheme. Anytime you talk about a defense and a defensive coordinator, you have to start with the DNA of that defensive coordinator, and that means the scheme. The 34 is coming back right now. On many fronts, it's a misnomer, especially when you're talking about how often a team is in nickel personnel, right, where you got four down linemen and two linebackers. To me, it starts with a scheme. They're going back to the 3-4. They're going to play a lot more man cover, close the middle of the field. This is philosophy from Vance Joseph. Now, after you get by the scheme, you start talking about personnel. Who's going to populate that scheme? And anytime you're talking about that in the National Football League, where do you start? The edge and the perimeter. That being corners, right? You start at the edge. Chandler Jones and the fact they went out and targeted T. Suggs, T. Sizzle, and brought him in opposite of Chandler Jones. Brooks Reed is one of these guys who's just going to line up very similar to the junkyard dog, Marcus Golden. He's just going to give you whatever he's got. He, he's going to rush the passer with everything he's got, and he's going to be able to get some pressure. But it all starts with Chandler Jones, to me, and T. Sizzle. Those two guys... We know that Chandler Jones is, he's a pleaser, guys. He does. He tries to impress. He likes to impress. He like, How many guys do you know actually signed the big money contract and got better as a player, right? We've seen guys that have signed the big money contract and stayed the same. We've seen guys that have signed the big money contract and gotten worse gotten lazy as well. But how many guys do you see actually sign the big money contract and be more productive? And that's what Chandler Jones has been. That's how good he is. And yet at the same time, and I asked him this question, I was talking to him about this very thing. I said, are you going to show off a little bit for T-Sizzle? You know, I mean, it's Terrell Suggs. This guy could be in the Hall of Fame at some point, right? Are you going to show off he said, yeah, absolutely, right? Because I mean, think about this. It'd be like me playing with the best fullback that has ever played the game. I would I was you. <laughs> <laughs> would I, would I want to go ahead and, and would I want to impress a guy like that? Of course. And that's why I think that dynamic is going to be really, really good. And the most underrated part of T. Sizzle's game is the fact that he's a football player. We all know about his ability to rush the passer, right? It's legendary in the NFL. He's a football player through and through, and he's a team leader as well. I love that dynamic. And then you talk about Robert Elford, who I thought was also one of the best signings of the offseason to actually sign him, bring him in, sign him, and then all of a sudden have Patrick Peterson on the other side, right? Now we know what's going to happen with Patrick Peterson and the fact that he's going to miss the first six games of the season. Hey, Byron Murphy, guess what? It's time for you to step up and actually get that spot, get the opportunity to win that spot. The corner opposite now of Robert Alford win that spot in training camp. We'll see what happens. I don't know. But the personnel on the perimeter and the personnel on the edge, stunning in this new defensive scheme. And let's talk about DJ Swearinger and Buda Baker, and then we'll get into the D-line because that's where it all starts. Yeah, no, it's a great point, Michael. It really is. Uh, Tremaine Brock, I would love it if Tremaine Brock actually won the number two corner opposite of now Robert Elford, right, realizing that you're going to miss Pat P for six games. And then you could take Byron Murphy and just control his reps a little bit more from the slot, mm-hmm. right? I Now, listen. He's going to be on the perimeter at some point in time in his NFL career. He's got that kind of talent. He is a first-round talent, in my opinion. But I wouldn't like to start him that way. I'd love to start him in the slot and be able to control his reps just a little bit more, right? But I don't know what's going to happen. I'm glad that Tremaine Brock Jr. is here because I think that guy is a possibility, a viable option to be the other corner, the number two corner. We'll see how it all shakes out. But listen, if Byron Murphy is just better than everyone else, you're going to start him, and you should start him. 
staying with that back end and, and the safety position, Buda Baker going back to his natural position where he's more comfortable and where he hopes he actually gets an interception. He does not have a career pick. He's got a fumble return for a touchdown, but not a career pick. He believes he might be more active, more apt at getting one of those interceptions with where they want him to play this season. Buda, Buda, Buda. Oh, my goodness, I love this. Buda Baker, right? I mean, the guy is a student of the game. I love Buda Baker, his playmaking ability. I want to see the combination of Buda Baker and DJ, right? I, I want to see Swearinger. Swearinger is probably one of my favorite players on the team right now. I don't talk to him very much. He's got a scowl on his face every time he walks by me, and I just say to myself, dog, when he walks by. Exactly. Dog. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's who he is, and I love that because you need guys like that. You don't, you, you don't want everyone walking around with a scowl on his face, right? But – Swearinger is the type of guy that means it, and it's genuine, and his teammates feed off of that intensity, right? And the fact that you've got Buda Baker and and DJ Swearinger, you got them back there in your back end, that's going to be a combination I cannot wait to actually see. Yeah, okay, so we, you talked about the perimeter. We talked about the secondary here. Uh, let's focus on the guys up front that are going to make the job easier for a guy like Jordan Hicks and Hassan Reddick. And they went out and got Darius Phylon. Uh, you know, his snap count went every, up every single year. He was in, in, in Los Angeles and San Diego. Corey Peters, kind of steady Eddie, just a great veteran guy in the locker room and on the field. And then Rodney Gunter, them being able to bring him back on a one year deal, prove a deal. And then you throw in Zach Allen and. You know, Dogby, I think he's got a chance to, to be a rotation guy. Of course, Robert Kemdichi is on the shelf right now. So your thoughts on them going back to a 3-4 where you don't need, you know, nine guys. You need possibly seven to play a 3-4. Yeah, no. Um, you know what? I love the personnel that they have. Corey Peters, like you said right now. I mean, this guy's he's as good as it gets for a one technique, a guy that is going to play over the center. He, he really is. Listen, uh, the fact they got Rodney Gunter – coming back as well. I thought that was a critical signing. A one-year contract, a prove-it contract after he had a great year last year. I'm not worried about the defensive line. I'm not worried about that at all. I believe they're going to have a nice rotation. To me, the the second biggest signing, not only T. Suggs, not only Robert Alford, I should say the third (laughs) biggest signing then, I would say Jordan Hicks. This guy right here, the fact that you finally have a Carlos Dansby, a Los Dirty once again, in the middle of that defensive front, calling out defensive fronts, calling out defenses, period, and calling out offensive plays as well. This kid, I was talking to Billy Davis about this right here, right? Billy Davis, of course, had the opportunity to coach Jordan Hicks. This kid has got every everything you want out of a classic Mike linebacker. He can run. He can run sideline to sideline, right? But he also is a thinker. He's like having another coach on the field, a coach inside the box. Guys, I cannot tell you how critical that is to get everyone lined up in the right gap, get everyone lined up and know what it is that they're doing, to have a guy that Hassan Reddick can turn to and go, what am I supposed to do on this play again? And for him, Jordan Hicks, to be able to tell him, oh, you got you got back, you got the back number two coming out. Now, do you have any idea how critical that is? It's the most overlooked part of a talent evaluator. He overlooks what one guy knows and when, what one guy can actually pass along to somebody else. Talent evaluators, oh, they always overlook that. Coaches never do. It's one of the first things they look at. Does this guy know what he's doing? And, oh, by the way, can he help everyone else get lined up? Jordan Hicks was a massive signing by Steve Kime. You know, we've talked about this on Cards Cover 2, and that is you look at the commitment they made to Robert Alford, three-year deal, commitment to Jordan Hicks, Can I just say this quickly, deal. Michael, Robert Alford, you brought him up. The most talented cornerback that has ever been with the Arizona Cardinals while they've had Pat Pate. The most talented cornerback opposite of Pat P the Arizona Cardinals have ever had. 
Now, listen, I know you can look at Pro Football Focus. You can talk about last year. And, oh, my goodness, he didn't look like Robert Alford last year, and he was horrible, and his grade was horrible, whatever. He, he had a high ankle sprain that limited this guy. And not only that, go back and look at the tape. He wasn't alone. There was a lot of people out there that had a rough year on that Falcons defense. But having said that, Robert Alford, go look at the other five years that he played right there. He was graded very, very highly. A guy that was signed to almost a $10 million a year contract. This guy can play. He's the, he's the most talented corner opposite of Patrick Peterson the Cardinals have ever had in the Papi era. How, how does that play out? I don't know. But, man, we're going to have a front row seat, and I'm excited to see it. Yeah, he told us, and, and Craig brought it up, he said he wanted to play. It, it, yeah, he said, I wasn't 100%, but we had so many injuries, I felt like I needed to be out there. So that speaks volumes of who the guy was versus worrying about where he was going to Amen, be in the future. Michael. And the reason why I bring up they, they made a commitment to both of these guys that you're excited about is they feel like they're part of the core moving forward when you give three-year deals. Now, if Suggs was younger and he can come back right. next year – I'm just saying, the guys you pointed out, they've made commitments to. This is not a one-year prove-it deal. They're part of the future. Yeah, no doubt about it. I'm so fascinated to see what it looks like when you do have Pat P back and you got Robert Alford, and all of a sudden you could take Byron Murphy and move him as your number three corner, and maybe you got Tremaine Brock Jr. as your number four. I, You know what? I'll take that and run like a banshee with those four guys. <laughs> Question, though. <laughs> Is Hassan Reddick a part of that core, and how much a Jordan Hicks next to him will help? And then Stunning. just the fact that he's moved around so much. He's had three different defensive coordinators in as many years he's been in the NFL. I don't know if we really know exactly what the Cardinals have with him at a linebacker spot. Well, you're good at this, Greg. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you nailed it right there. I mean, that's what it is. Think about this kid. The worst case scenario has happened to Hassan Reddick. The fact that he would he think about what they did with him at Temple, right? I mean, he was off the ball and then he was on the ball and then he played his last year on the ball, right? I the worst possible scenario has happened to Hassan Reddick, where he'd play in three different defenses in three years. This this kid has never had any real continuity or stability. Not only from a positional perspective, but from a scheme perspective. And because of that, right now, he's, his head has got to be spinning. Jordan Hicks, he's going to be able to look at Jordan Hicks, and Jordan Hicks is going to be able to tell him, this is what you do. You, you, once you know what to do, now you can go do it. There are two phases, two elements, one strategic, one tactical, to playing the game of football. Number one, know what to do. Number two, go do it with authority. Well, you can't do it with authority if you don't think you're doing the right thing. If you don't know what to do, how can you actually do it with authority? Now, all of a sudden, he's going to have a guy he can look at and go, I'm right about this, right? No, yeah, you're right on it, Hassan. Go do it with authority. That is, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm happy for the kid because Hassan Reddick wants to be good. He cares about this stuff. He wants to be good. He's got all the talent in the world to be good. Now, all of a sudden, he's got a safety net, if you will, playing alongside of him that's going to be able to tell him, no, you're right, yeah, you've got man right there. Yep, you're good. Now go do it with authority. And he's told us already that they're making progress. I mean, the fact that they're obviously hanging out and, and their lockers are right next to each other. He, I'm not saying they're finishing each other's sentences, but he, you could see that – um, they've taken a, a liking to each other, knowing they're going to play next to each other, and he's finally comfortable playing in this system. And you know better than I do, Wolf, when you're not thinking, you're playing, you're reacting, and now you can just go out there and play football. Yeah, and not only that, too, Michael. Stop and think about this. Um, every great defense that has ever been, lately, I would say, in the last decade, every great defense would love to actually have two linebackers they don't take off the field. Two line. You want to go nickel? That's fine. We'll go four down, and we'll take our two linebackers that don't come off the field. They're three down linebackers, and we'll stick them in there. So you want to run the ball? Go ahead and run the ball. Go ahead and try to run the ball right there. Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis. 
All right, Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman, right? We'll go ahead. Every great defense has been able to keep two linebackers on the field, and they don't come off the field. That is a huge, if you've got that, you have gold in your hand. Gold in your hand if you're Vance Joseph, right? So that, to me, I'd love to see that. Is it possible that Jordan Hicks, I don't think Jordan Hicks coming off the field, guys. No. I mean, that's just me right there, Michael, right? Jordan Hicks, he's got to prove it. But I think he has proven it. He's not going to come off the field. And then Hassan Reddick. If Hassan Reddick knows what to do, he's got all of the ability to stay on the field with Jordan Hicks. Man, if that can happen for the Cardinals, again, that's gold. And we'll see, perhaps, this defense back to a top 10 defense that was in years prior. They have the personnel right now. The the upgrade on the defensive side of the ball in in particular is profound from what it was a year ago in my opinion and Vance is we focus so much on you know second and third down it looks like the focus here on this defense is first down (laughs) get that's where it all starts I mean obviously sounds like Todd Bowles when you say that yeah he's he's focusing on first down first of all let's stop the run and get the quarterback off his spot and put him in second and long and third and long where now all of a sudden they got to make a decision to throw the football or are they going to turn it over? So he's really focusing on first down. No, that's a great point, Michael, really. And hopefully it all is going to start with stopping the run. Number 32 in yards per game, number 27 in yards per play. You put the two together, rushing yards per play allowed and rushing yards per game allowed, how awful the Arizona Cardinals were last year. You want to start? You you look at one metric that tells me you're 3-13, and 13, it's that one right there. Number 32 in rushing yards per game allowed, and number 27 in rushing yards per play allowed. Yeah, 3-13. and 13. Wolf, absolutely love it. Appreciate it. Thank Can't you thank you enough. Sorry and, uh, I'm tired. No, it's all good. <laughs> I mean, this is great. I can't wait to get to camp. We're just a few weeks away. Thank goodness for coffee. <laughs> Thanks, Wolf. Okay. I know Wolf was an offensive player and a great special teamer, but – When you hear him talk about the defense, you wonder if he was a defensive player and an offensive body just because he was all about the contact, the hitting, and that's what we expect to see defensively from the Cardinals here this season. Yeah, and and we're all curious every time you hire a new head coach how many times they're going to be in pads, and and obviously there's rules, so be – you know, it's more about technique and, and making sure that, you know, obviously you get your work done. But I, I'm curious to see how physical the camp will be now. I'm sure there'll be a couple uh, practices outdoors. But, Wolf, I, you can, I wonder if he played linebacker. Because usually the best players on the team are like linebackers and they either are quarterbacks and then they become running backs. We know he was a fullback. But he does have the mentality of a defensive-minded player. And, and, and obviously he played on offense. But to listen to him over these last couple of shows – the passion that he has. I mean, he is so intense, and it's not like once he gets in in that football jargon, it's amazing how much he knows and and, and is able to try to explain to to the fan base out there, and that's what makes him great on game day. Yeah, I hope the Bird Gang enjoyed hearing from Ron Wolfley here as we continue here on Cards Cover 2 from the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center broadcasting as we always do in our Bose QC35. Go to Bose.com for more information. And a reminder, if you ever miss a show, you can download as a podcast via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Music, Tune in and SoundCloud. And don't forget all of your favorite Cardinals podcasts can be found at azcardinals.com forward slash podcast. Before we get on out of here though, I want to kind of piggyback off of our discussion with, with Wolf and the number of different faces and even some familiar faces maybe in positions much better suited to their skill set. And the question is, as you look at this roster and you look at the new guys and some of the guys who are coming back and getting into their own, you're talking about Hassan Reddick, Buda Baker now, veterans, if you will, who are you either excited to see or perhaps think this season could be huge for them? And it's, you know, breakout season. I don't know if we want to go that far, but just someone who can really excel with what Vance Joseph wants to do. 
Well, it's a great question. I mean, you always look at the newcomers, and, and we've talked about you know the, the commitment they made to Robert Alford, and hopefully you know when Patrick gets back, we're not talking about that opposite corner. And then they went out and signed Jordan Hicks, and he's going to be the quarterback on defense. So to me, those guys, uh, I would like to see them play up to par. Obviously, they got to stay healthy, but they're going to be a big part of this uh, this defense with newcomers. You know, Hassan Reddick, everything you're hearing, that he's he's doing well, and I think he's finally comfortable. He, he's probably going to have to cover some tight ends. So maybe this is where he takes that next step, where he's finally comfortable, and, and him and Hicks, they're, they're, their lockers are right next to each other. It seems like there's a great chemistry already. And and then I look at Buda Baker. I, I think he's going to be one of the better Cardinals in the future, and, and you know, I, I, I like the fact that he's going back to his natural position. I think we're going to see him in the box. And Swearinger, so I, if I had to pick a guy that I think can make that next step, uh, I'm going to go with Buda Baker. And, but I'm excited about Hicks and Alford just because we haven't had that on the roster since Carlos Dansby or Daryl Washington. We haven't had that corner on the roster probably since Antonio Cromarty. Those are big upgrades. They just got to stay healthy. Well, if you're talking about Cardinal players' core, Cardinals players and draft picks. I think we would love to see Buda Baker, Hassan Reddick. I'll even throw in Rodney Gunter. I know it's a prove it year for him as far as his contract, but those three on the defensive side, the Cardinals invested a draft pick in. So if you can make them part of the future, I think would go a long way. Now, one of the names that I'm really anxious to see is someone who's familiar to this team but is back, and that's DJ Swearinger, just because of how, one, amped he is, how excited he is. He knows that things didn't work out well for him in Washington. He wants to show everyone that he is a much different player, both on and off the field. And then it's something that you keep bringing up, that dog mentality. Him, Darius Phylon, Terrell Suggs, you've got three at each level of that defense that are vocal, and will hold guys accountable. Yeah, and I hope the Cardinals and, and again the players vote on the uh, the captains. I, I would nothing against Buda Baker. I still think he's young. Swearinger, he had the captaincy in Washington. He was only there for a short time. Now, obviously, they let him go. He made some comments. Hopefully, he's grown from that. He knows that these opportunities don't exist. Uh, he's lucky to come back here. Now, I'm going to say this though: contract year. So. Listen, this team has a ton of cap space. You would like to find that tandem for the future. Um, with Buda Baker being here, you know he's gonna, they're going to ID him. So it's a big year for both parties. You play well, they'll reward you. But I, I hope that he gets the captaincy because I think he brings a little bit different swag to this team, and he's going to be the guy that's probably going to be breaking down the huddles on Sunday along with Suggs because he brings that much passion. He cares. Not that other guys don't. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. and. Yeah, we're going to have a game. Maybe it's a 15-yard penalty, but I think his heart's in the right place. You just can't have it happen you know, late in the game on a third down or in the fourth quarter. And then just a favorite of ours here on Cards Cover 2 because he joined us earlier in the offseason is Darius Phylon. Doesn't speak loudly when you're just kind of talking with him, but he has a, fi- a smile that is infectious, and everyone – the entire roster, offense, defense, special teams, they all love him. And that's someone that could be, uh, a, a, that wasn't a, a late signing, but someone that all of a sudden that you picked up that didn't seem like anyone else wanted and has always improved from year to year that might have found himself a new home here. Yeah, and you know we had a chance to talk to him, and I I'm always curious when you go into a new locker room, and yeah, he had skins on the wall, but you know he's still reaching his peak. We talked about his snap count going up every year. The you know the first couple of days, I mean, they all kind of know each other. I'm sure when you sign, you start looking at the roster, who's your position coach. Maybe you meet him in the process, and he said, no, that this is who I am. I'm, I come in there, and they kind of figure it out. So to me, when he, when you're when you're real and you're not trying to put on a show, or this is because you can tell over a period of time this is who the person is. You, you can maybe you know phone me, be a phony for a couple of days, but in the end, you kind of know who they are. He sounds like he's just a straight shooter, and what you see is what you get. Yeah, again, real excited about this defense and what Vance Joseph wants to do, and you also add a veteran linebackers coach in Bill Davis. It's a good staff, and again, going back to that 3-4, which this team has played predominantly uh, since arriving in Arizona, so going back perhaps to once again a top-10 defense. Again, can't thank Ron Wolfley enough over these past two shows, breaking it all down, offense and defense, as we get closer and closer to training camp. That's right. Uh, You blink, 
and we'll be all at State Farm Stadium. And with that, we'll sign off here on this edition of Cards Cover 2. Special thanks to those behind the scenes, Tim Delaney, Jim Omohundro, Devin Henry, Jackson Sipes, for my partner Mike Jarecki. I'm Craig Riolu. This has been Cards Cover 2.